everyone and welcome to a video that I've never done before. However, last week I found out some information which literally made my... I can't remember the last time I was that happy. Like, the news that I got last week... I, and, and I should have known about it a few months ago. I only just found out about it last week. I think it was revealed in April or something. Um, but the news was that my favourite game of all time... You might be thinking, what's this crap on the screen right now? This was my favourite game for years when I was in school. Okay, now this game came... Well, the first game came out in 2001. Four days before my birthday. And it was European Wars, and it, if you've ever played, what's it called? Oh, shiz. Age of Empires. If you ever played Age of Empires, okay, then you will love this game. It is a real-time strategy game, very similar to Age of Empires. I, I keep wanting to call it something else, Age of Empires. The only difference between Age of Empires and this is this has a lot more, I find it a lot more tactical. I found that it was a lot better online and also it allows you to control thousands of soldiers, peasants, etc. Rather than a cap of 200 to 250. I think that's what Age of Empires had. And the problem was Age of Empires sold like 3 million copies in its like first year or first few years. Whereas Cossacks, it was never really as popular, and that really upsets me to this day. But last week, I found out that they're going to re-release re the game with brand new graphics, I believe an upgraded engine. Uh, so it's going to be, and, and I'll probably put some pictures up on screen right now in this video so you can see some of the screenshots and stuff. It's going to have upgraded graphics, it's going to have better AI because that was one of the things that lacked in this game. If you played it single player, the AI was a little bit basic. And when I say a little bit basic, you've got to remember this game came out 14 years ago. Okay, 14 years ago. And I played it every day for years like there wasn't a day that i missed i'm not even kidding i didn't go on holiday i didn't go away i played this this every day and this was when dial up was there okay um so you probably want to see the game now this game is going to be re-released at the end of this year and i haven't been paid to make this video i haven't been sponsored to make this video i emailed the company and they are going to send me a beta they are going to let me into the beta for the new game and they're also going to send me a review, like a free copy of the game. And to me, that is literally a dream come true. Because this game was my childhood game. It was my, like, it's my favourite game of all time. My friend enjoyed it so much, he tried stealing it from me. That's how good it was. Um, and when you see it, you'll probably be like, this game's crap, the graphics are bad and all this sort of stuff. But you've got to remember, this is 14 years old. I'm just going to show you the basics of the game, okay? So these are your peasants. This is your town hall. So you'd start off by making a town hall and a mill. And in, in thousands mode, th there was li like hardcore tacticians. They would usually have 13 people build this and five people build that and they would manage to select them so quickly that both buildings would be created um, at the same time and what they would work to do is they would work to build the market as quickly as possible so for example oh shiz i've built the same building twice that sucks because when you build a building more than once it increases the cost uh which kind of sucks what they would do is they would in fact can i restart I don't, I don't think I can. Um, replay the game. I think, I think we can actually. Yeah, okay, I'm going to re restart from scratch. The first thing they would try and do is build the market. And the reason why they would try and build the market in this um, game mode is because coal is not useful at the moment. So they would aim to trade their coal for food and basically... What that would do is it would allow them to, um, so let's, uh, let's 
get that. It would allow them to upgrade their peasants really early on in the game. Now, the problem is, once someone uses the coal, so for example, if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because I've got 5,000 coal, that will give me 12,000 food, okay? Now, the next person who would do it would only get 8,000 food. The market changes. So that's why it would be so important to rush your peasants and get the right amount building each building uh, to ensure that you've got a good kind of trade price, I guess. Yeah, that's the right word, isn't it? Trade price uh, for your coal. Um, so, they're, they're, you know... You, and, and if you were the last person, because there's obviously four other people in the map. I mean, you can have like seven or eight, I think. Um, if you were the last person, you'd have a really, really low trade price. So as you can see, at the moment, I've got 16,000 uh, 16, food, which is, which is quite a lot. So what they'd do is they would then uh, set, their, set their point where they wanted their soldiers to go. And they would be able to upgrade them a lot. Now, they wouldn't usually upgrade their defense. They'd usually upgrade their attack. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a second one here. And then I'm going to send these guys over here. And I've also got to remember to keep remaking peasants. Uh, and you've got to remember, you, these graphics, you might be saying, what is this crap? Oh, crap. Did I, I had cannons on. Oh, shiz. Got to turn cannons off. That That, that is kind of bad actually that is kind of bad in fact i'm going to make this this is the um academy and it allows you to make extra upgrades on stuff which is pretty cool um now obviously i've got fog of war so what we're going to do is we're going to send peasants out to kind of scout the area and uh you would also want a couple of soldiers around your base to ensure that um people can't just walk in and capture stuff uh, that's quite important. So as you can see, I can upgrade my peasants quite a lot here. Um, now you got to remember, I played this game like 10 years ago. Okay, I'm not. I was in the top 100 online, and offline it wasn't very fun because the AI wasn't that great. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick my hands up and say the AI wasn't that great offline. But if you played it online, it was the most tactically fun. Uh, game I have ever played in my life like I had so much fun playing this game I played it so much and I I can't believe it's coming back this year I, I just can't believe it so what I'm gonna do is here I can either upgrade my army a little bit more which I am going to do purely because Russia's um, Russia's uh, pikemen Forgot, forgot the word, even though it's right in front of my face. Russia's pikemen, because they cost iron, they are slightly stronger. Now, I could upgrade this and get 100% extra wood for every wood that I mine. But I'm not going to. I'm going to upgrade these. And I'm also going to create an officer and a drummer. And basically what that allows me to do is it allows me to create a formation. I want to try and create a another town hall because that will allow me to create some more peasants to get some more resources pretty quickly um so i, I hope you are enjoying this video guys <laughs> to be honest I, I this video might not get many views it might get lots of dislikes and stuff but if you like age of empires then check out this game okay it might be old it, it came around the same time as age of empires so basically if you like age of empires um I mean, Age of Empires has similar graphics to this. In, in fact, these graphics are probably slightly better in some ways. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade my field capacity. And that upgrades it to 200%. Basically, you're seeing these fields disappear. And when lots of peasants use, use the corn, uh, they, they get used and destroyed. And if you don't keep uh, doing this, then... Um, eventually the whole field will go so basically using this the, the, the field is always golden golden what a beautiful word right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring my army up here and we're going to turn it into so we've got turkey is that Tur turkey up there because turkey and algeria they've got similar looking units 
So as you can see, this is Ukraine. I was telling you that they don't have pikemen. They've only got shooting men. So these are their shooting men. And they, as you can see, each nation has different looking buildings. And different uh, tactics and all that kind of shiz. So it's, re it's really fun and really exciting. I'm also going to upgrade this because that increases harvesting by 20%, which is quite good. Now, when you create a formation, you can either create a, uh, a line... And there's different numbers that you can create. Like, for example, you can create 15, 36, 72, 120. And I think it goes up even higher than that. Uh, so you can create a line. And you can create a square. Or you can create a box. Now, each of these have different kind of strengths and weaknesses. Uh, usually, uh, you'd see people using the line or the square. Now you might be asking why do you create a formation? Now the reason why people create a formation, and this is this is grinding me, uh, let's move this rally point because these soldiers keep going there and I'm gonna put a soldier over here so they don't get captured. Uh, you can also create peasants individually like that and pay for them up front or you can push control and um, it will pay for them it will create them unlimited like it will just keep creating them and creating them and creating them so that's normally what you see people using uh, I might do that as well because you get 140% extra harvesting I forgot to do that I should have really done that the reason why you'd see people create formations is because it increases the strength of your peasants um, so I've got a I've got 120 here I'm going to show you how strong these guys are, okay? And you get different you get different um, abilities here. So you can you can click a point here, go and attack everyone on the way. So they're attack ready. They walk over with their pikes out, which is pretty good. And one thing that you would often see people do was as soon as they started fighting and they clumped up, and you you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm gonna I'm just gonna walk these for now they would go into stand ground mode and basically what stand ground mode does it increases their defense slightly i believe um so if if they were stood there if they stood their ground they would be slightly stronger i think it was defense wise it might have been attack and defense wise but i'm not 100 percent sure i'd uh i'd have to check that out um so let's create another let's create another formation and i'm sending more people over here to uh, gather more food because our food is pretty low at the moment. We don't really need coal yet uh, However, eventually we will need some coal. We don't really need iron too much either Until we start doing horses because Poland's strength is that their pikemen cost wood and food instead of iron and food uh, So let's get these guys walking I mean, you might notice that formations walk slightly slower. It's because what they do is they, they come up with like a point like this. They stop and then they move on to the next. Um, they're not too much slower though. Here we go. Okay, we're reaching Russia. Now, we're probably going to die uh, pretty quickly, I think, because Russia's troops... Let's see if we can see. We can't see their stats. Um, but if you compare their stats... Russia's troops are pretty freaking strong. They're what I think they're the strongest uh, pikemen in the game. However, if they don't have an army, for example, if they created an army like I have, oh, they've created, they've created some musketeers as well. I could have created some musketeers, but they're not very good. The best musketeers in the game are probably Ukraines, especially early on. Uh, oh crap! Okay, so they're building towers. The little gits. Towers are freaking OP. I, I hate towers, okay? Whenever I played, I would turn cannons. So I'm going to go stand ground. You'll notice my troops stop. Can you see how, like, Russia is destroying me right now, okay? Destroying me because Poland's uh, troops are cheap, but they're not as strong. So they're, they're, they're basically like the Primark troop, okay? They're, they're cheerful cheap but that they die quite quickly 
uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to send the... Oh, why is my food going down so quickly? This is crazy. I think it's because I forgot to upgrade this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer 1,000 gold to food and just get that upgrade and that will that will fix it. Okay, so we're in a pretty bad state right now because Russia literally just destroyed us. Like, seriously destroyed us. Now, what we could do is... You gotta remember, I'm playing against AI, and the AI was pretty crap in this game. The The reason why I love this game so much was because of its online play. If you played this online against real humans, it was amazing. Um, so, our food is now going up pretty high. One thing I do want to do is start getting some more mines. Now, I saw some gold mines over here. However, we need some stone. So... Because stone, you don't usually find that you need tons of stone in this game. However, there are a couple of tactics I'm going to tell you about soon. Which enable you to evolve from this tiny little town into gigantic towns. And you, you'll see you'll see why in a minute. What I am going to do is I'm going to upgrade this for 500 gold. And that basically shows me on the map with little yellow dots where um, mines are. And I'm also going to upgrade the attack damage of my soldiers. Okay, so we've got some gold now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a stables. Now, I wouldn't normally build this stables, but I want to show you guys what the stables are like. And then I am going to create two mines here. Now, what you can do, you can upgrade your mines. It costs gold and it costs food and it basically adds well the first upgrade adds an extra five people i think the second upgrade adds an extra eight people um so if so for example in the menu where i was explaining you can have it so resource um like gold and stuff is rare you can upgrade your mines so there might only be a few mines on the map but you can upgrade them which is pretty good okay so we've got our horses now poland has one of the strongest horses in the game uh, and they look pretty cool as well. They're pretty expensive though. And they're the winged hussars. I hope I'm saying that right. Hussar. Hus hussar. Hus hussar. Uh, now, I don't know what Rush is doing. I think they're playing it cool. You'll notice here, okay. I can capture that. Okay, I can capture that. But if I get near that, the AI will blow it up. And it will destroy a lot of my base. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to get couple of soldiers to walk over there and capture that okay let's say this is my my army is gonna gonna die here right here um like the these freaking okay i'm gonna retreat i'm gonna retreat okay so we got some horses being made and they are they are really strong horses you, ju you just wait and see guys you, you just wait and see I'm going to upgrade the defense a little bit, but it, it doesn't really do too much. Like, people would upgrade. Okay, what the reason why I'm retreating is because they got turrets. And they've got loads of freaking... Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to bring our army back. Now, we're, we're going to be in trouble any minute now, and you'll see why. Um, I'm going to send some peasants into there get some extra gold and I'm going to send some into there because we upgraded that. I'm then going to turn this into a thing and we're going to bring that over there and we're going to bring... Now one thing I could do is I could attack Turkey up the top because Ukraine are doing really well against, um, against them. Like they're destroying them. Because I've been talking so much I haven't been doing very well at all. Um... It's because I, I get so excited when I play this game. I get so I used to be really seriously into this game. I'm gonna be I'm gonna build a tower, you know. I'm gonna build a tower, and I'm gonna build it here because on a hill it gets extra range, which is pretty good, right? Pretty good. And then also going to upgrade this. It increases my wood efficiency by double, which is pretty good. How's my uh, capacity doing? Population 500 of 500. Okay, that's why we haven't got any more people being made. So I'm going to make some houses. Now, I've already got 500 people on the map. Okay, 500 people. If this was Age of Empires, 
I would only be able to have half of that. Half of that. Okay. Half. Okay. What is Turkey doing? Uh-uh. No. I ain't having that. Get out of here. I'm going to delete that. The reason why I'm going to delete it is because if they captured it, they could use my peasants to create Polish stuff. So if I managed to capture one of their peasants, like one of these, I could then create the buildings that Turkey creates. And that would be very um, beneficial tactically, and I'll explain why. When I create a barracks as Poland, okay, it requires wood, gold, and stone. Now, when you create your first one, it only requires like a couple of hundred resources, okay? When you create your second one, the resources it requires goes up drastically. When you want to create your third one, it goes up even more. So if I wanted to create another barracks, it would cost me 30,000 gold, okay? So it would be very rare that you'd reach that in thousands unless the game went on for like an hour or so. So, let's, let's build a tower there as well. Now, Ukraine... They don't require gold to make their barracks. And you might notice that they've got four, okay? Their barracks are a lot cheaper to make. However, because they don't have pikemen and they only have musketeers and musketeers take a while, take a while to create, um, it, it means that because they've got loads of barracks, they can still kind of compete with uh, nations that create pikemen, really really quickly so what i'm going to do is i'm going to send these guys up and we're going to try and wipe out turkey we're going to try and wipe them out okay now i hope that you, in fact i'm just going to let them do it just just so you can see you'll see that when these guys get close now you notice in the formation you might be wondering why they're moving so strangely okay that's going to blow up in a minute just watch okay yeah, they blew it up. And that, that does damage to your soldiers, you see, which is quite 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 annoying. Uh, pikemen move better when they're not in a formation. And they fight better when they're not in a formation. Like, they attack a lot more. Whereas when they're in a formation, they only do stuff together, which is why they move so strange. However, in a formation, they're a lot stronger. Um, when you build walls, it actually requires stone to, to upkeep them. So it gets quite uh, quite expensive. However, you can build wooden walls, uh, which don't... I don't think they require wood to keep them up. But wooden walls are really, really freaking weak. Ukraine can only build wooden walls. They can't build stone walls. In fact, we're probably going to lose this game just because I'm not building cannons. And everyone else is building... Why is that not blowing up? It's because there's a man next to it. There's a soldier next to it. Um, Turkey and Algeria, they're very similar to Ukraine. They can create uh, arches and things and these kind of weird looking men. And they don't, they're, they can build more barracks cheaper as well. So, however, their units are a little bit weaker. Although Turkey's, Turkey's um, pikemen are pretty strong actually. They're, they're pretty strong. Algeria can't build pikemen. It can only build these little weird infantry here. These little, like, half-naked Aladdin men. Like, for example, I'm going to take this out of formation. Okay, how do I... Dismiss squad. Okay, so this is no longer a formation. They'll attack a lot better. Like, a lot more kind of natural, flow-like. Oh, I caught this. Ah, oh, but it had no peasants in it. You can also capture cannons as well. As long as there's no one near it. So my arm is moving a lot better right now. So let's just let's just send these up. These winged hussars are freaking strong, but they require like it takes a long time to create them. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is this would be a tactic in the real online game. You'd get loads of wood because we upgraded that wood upgrade. You'd then transfer it all into coal. Okay, and you'd need about. 20, uh, 12,000 I think. Is it 12,000? Yeah. So if we trade that into coal. Okay.
Okay, and then what we can do is we can upgrade this. You get 300 times the amount of stone you would normally get from mining stone. Okay, 300 times. So people would immediately stop gathering wood. I mean, they might gather a little bit of wood and they would immediately transfer to gathering stone because you get 300 times it. It's insane. And you can even upgrade this one as well. It gives you another extra hundred and you would literally get crap tons of stone. Now, you might be thinking, you can have thousands of people in this, but, you know, uh, the barracks increase population size, town halls increase population size, houses increase it. The problem is, when you build stuff, it increases the cost. That is always that is always the problem. So the more houses you build, the more expensive they get. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, you'd always see people like looking for good stone. Uh, there's a good plot there. I think this is a, this is a really good plot here. Okay, so I'm going to go there. We've also got a gold thing here. Look at my armies up here, man. This is what I mean. You got some. You got some good freaking armies, and we've got cannons and shears firing. Lots, loads of different types of cannons. They're building ships as well. You can build fishing boats, things like that. Oh my god, this game. I never really dwelled into cannons and stuff though, because it pissed me off. Like, I just found cannons too OP. Like, you, you could literally have a thousand men. Five cannons could just wipe them out. It's crazy. There are different types of cannons though. These ones are quite cheap. And they, they're good for destroying buildings from long distance. Like, they're cannons. Oh, it's a tower. Look. The ta look how much damage the tower's doing to my freaking man. I don't know what Russia is doing. I haven't seen Russia attack anyone yet. Although, if Russia comes to attack me now, I am screwed. What I am going to do is I'm going to create a diplomatic center. Okay? And this is what people would do. A diplomatic center is basically where you hire soldiers for gold. That is basically what it is. Uh, and let's send those there. Create some more there. And get... Oh, I've selected six, bugger. Because only five people can go in it at once. Unless you upgrade it. Okay, we're going to be in trouble here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my diplomatic center to come up here. These are the units you can create. Um, and it requires gold upkeep as well. So, and, and they get more expensive the more you make, okay? So, I'm going to really quickly select them like this. Can you see my gold going down? They, they costed 100 gold each. Can you see each one on the battlefield, it increases the price. If they all die, then it goes back down to 100. So, that's why you want to... You want to kind of order them whilst they're still at 100 gold. So you'd be clicking like crazy. Okay, so we're wiping out Turkey here. You can see the kind of buildings and stuff that they have. It's, it's pretty cool. Online mode, though, this game was so fun. And unfortunately, the servers haven't been on for ages. Because it, obviously it's like 15 years old, 14 years old. Um, and it was back when GameSpy was around. GameSpy is now closed i believe i think it's closed anyway okay so what we're going to do is we're going to send these guys over here now these these gunned horsemen you although um how can i explain this you can create these gunned horsemen if you get to the 18th century okay you can create them from your stables these are the 17th century version these are the 18th century version. You can see there, Dragoon 18th century. And to shoot, they require uh, iron and coal. Now, I've run out of iron, which is why they're unable to shoot. Uh, so you would have to ensure that you had enough resources. Uh, so you could have a gigantic army of shooting people. And that, that goes for your crane as well. In fact, I might show you your crane. Because it's quite unique af uh, uh, after this. Um... Ukraine, their barracks and stuff are quite cheap. However, you would need lots of iron and coal because 
the majority of your army is shooters. So, I mean, you didn't really see me build any iron and coal mines because my my soldiers required food and wood. Um, because I, I selected Poland and they're slightly different. Um, so I've started building some mines now, which will be a little bit better. Same with towers. They require um, coal and iron to shoot, I think. Um, and one upgrade I do want to try and get. Now you notice I've got lots of stone now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer half of it to iron that will reduce the price of stone unfortunately and i'm going to make the rest of it uh gold there is an upgrade here where you can build uh horses four times quicker so what we're going to do now is i'm going to create some more stables okay and we're going to create an army of horses uh, and these these horses are bloody strong as well especially if you upgrade their attack Seriously, they can wipe out an like just just a few of them can wipe out an army of peasants. They're really really strong. It's really good. Uh, let's collect some more wood. Now Ukraine is in a oh holy shit! Russia have built up a big army. We'd better go and help Ukraine, otherwise Ukraine could get wiped out. I'm gonna send these peasant uh, pikemen over here as well. And let's send these guys over there. Now, if I built, if I if I went to the 18th century and built these from a stables, they would be a lot stronger. Because I've hired them from the diplomatic center, they're a lot weaker. They're not as well trained. They don't have as much like health and stuff like that. Um, they're very strong still. I've just captured a cannon there. Can you see I captured a cannon, which is pretty good. So we're going to try, as you can see, they've got some as well. Diplomatic Center, though, is very good for getting archers uh, to destroy buildings. Oh, crap, we've run out of coal. Okay, we need, to, we need to retreat. We've run out of coal. That's not good. And we need to send that. Okay, so we've got our horses building a lot quicker now. A lot quicker. Going to get some more wood. And because we've got lots of stone, we're going to trade it all to coal. Because then we'll have enough coal to go and fight this army. Because we need to take we need to take this army out. This army is nothing. Okay, this army is nothing. Um, if you if you saw the 18th century soldiers. It's incredible. In fact, let's see if we can get to the 18th century. What to, to to get to the 18th century? I think you need a church, and I think it's just a church I need actually, and lots of. In fact, we might be able to go there straight away. Okay, what am I what am I missing? There is a building that I'm missing that we need. It might be an artillery depot. Even though uh, in some game modes you can't build cannons, you can still make the depot, which is quite good. We've reached our population limit as well, so I'm just going to send these soldiers over there. They'll probably they'll probably die, but oh well. I'm going to send my winged hussars in there as well. Uh, so we took out we took out that guy those guys pretty quickly. I'm going to just keep my army here for the time being. Uh, so here we go. We can upgrade. It requires 50,000 food, 9,000 gold. So I'm going to send these back to get some wood. Most people wouldn't even bother getting wood. They just keep getting stone and then transferring the stone to whatever resource they needed. Okay, we're now in the 18th century. So our stables can now create the dragoons. It can now create these hussars as well. They're... they're uh, they're what you'd nor you'd you'd usually see people create because they're cheaper, and they are quicker to make. Uh, so let's transfer over to those, and you can also create an 18th century barracks. Okay, and this is where it gets pretty pretty interesting. So instead of your 17th century barracks, you can create an 18th century barracks, which is pretty cool. So let's get our men and go and create some more mines over here because we need some more resources 
You're, the, the soldiers that come from the 18th century barracks will require more iron. They don't just require wood, unfortunately. And these buildings take ages to build. However, here's the balloon update, uh, upgrade. So if I get the balloon upgrade, you'll actually be able to see this. And there was a little bug in the game where if the... In fact, it might actually happen now. If the academy was too close to the edge of the map, the it might actually happen now. The balloon would rise and go off the edge of the map and you wouldn't actually be able to see the map. It was like a little, it was like a really uh, annoying bug. So the balloon's rising. Okay, no, it worked. That's fine. Okay. And the balloon will just float around now, which is pretty cool. So now you can see the whole map. You can see what your enemies are doing. Captured. Oh, 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 we've got some peasants here. We managed to get some peasants. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rush these peasants over here. If you notice that little arrow, that's basically uh, the direction you want your units to face. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I can now create Russian stuff. And this is really, really powerful because it means that I can create loads more barracks, loads more town halls for a cheaper price. Um, because the price only increases for the nation you've been building for. So at the moment, rush is cheap, but once I start building more Russian buildings, uh, it'll get expensive, just like Poland did. So we, we're getting a good horse here. There was also an upgrade here. Where is it? Here. It costs 9,000 gold, but it... It reduces the construction time of things by 75 freaking percent. So if I did that right now, that would immediately build, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so we've got some Russian units here. This is like a perfect opportunity to show you Russia because they have different buildings. Now, I can still get my Polish men to uh, help build Russian stuff. So let's... Let's get those over here. Russian barracks work in a different way. They're cheaper to make as well. But their pikemen are more expensive. So you'll notice here. 600 wood and 60 stone. Look how many I can make. I can, I can make a, a load. However, their pikemen are slower to, to make. So these come out quite quickly. Okay. These, these are a lot slower. So, one, two, three, four, five. About five seconds. That requires about one and a half, two seconds. So, that is the difference. Okay, our 18th century barracks has been made. This can make lots of different troops. It can make pikemen. Now, you look at how quickly these pikemen come out. Look how quickly they make. But they're really, really weak. Basically, people would make them as fire fodder. Is that the right word? Where they would basically put these in front of musketeers to take the bullets. Because they're, they're basically, you create them cheap, they're weak, you just have them there so the musketeers shoot them. Instead of your really expensive musketeers. So I'm going to create some musketeers. You can also create grenadiers, which fire grenades and stuff like that. Um... With Russia, you can create strelets as well, which are kind of similar to Ukraine's um, musketeers. However, they're not as strong. Ukraine's musketeers, okay, if you have them fully upgraded, an army of, say, 40 could take out an army of, like, a thousand pikemen. Their musketeers are so strong when they're fully upgraded. Like, they will literally one-shot kill people and their rate of fire is really strong uh, and all that kind of stuff um, so let's put those down there and there's also upgrades in here that you can improve to increase your rate of fire uh, the cost for musketeers so I should probably do that uh, how strong bullets are and stuff like that there's so much in this game um, what I probably will do is, though, I'll probably, uh, if, if you have enjoyed this video, I can create some more on different nations, different tactics, different um, resource modes. For example, if you played million mode, uh, there was a lot of different tactics 
when I when I was creating this 18th century barracks, I had about 10, 12 people on it, I think. What they would do is, they would get one guy, okay, and they would have him build it. And then they'd get another guy, one, just one, to build another one, another guy to build another one, another guy to build another one, another guy to build another one. And if that guy just spent his whole time just building it non-stop, it would take ages. But what they would then do, they would work, that, that would be at the beginning of the game, they, they'd create, they'd start building those barracks. By the time they created their blacksmith, their market, their town hall, and then their academy, and they upgraded this, and this works cross nations as well, by the way. Um, so, for example, if I got my Polish people to build a Russian building, it would be 75% con less con construction time. I can't, I can't talk. Um, they would then do that, and by then, that one guy would have done like 25% of the build and it would immediately build. There was like little tactics and stuff like that so it was pretty pretty cool. We've got our soldiers going in however we don't have enough iron so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 I'm going to do 1500 on iron and 1500 on coal so we now got crap tons. We're then going to send our horses up there as well up there, we're going to send our pikemen up there. I'm not going to formation them. We're then going to send these guys up there as well. We're going mass out. In fact, let's see the stats. Uh, I'd have to upgrade them first, actually, because I upgraded my Polish uh, guys. These guys do 9 damage. These ones do 16. And these ones are fully upgraded. These ones aren't. So, that is why... Uh, Russian pikemen are much, much, much stronger. They just have better stats. This freaking cannon is just taking out my horses like, like they're a pile of crap, which is a little bit disappointing. These horses are pretty, pretty cool and fast. I'd love to get some uh, Ukraine peasants, but I wouldn't be able to unless... I've got some Turkish ones. Okay, here we go. We can build Turkish stuff now. So, as you can see, the cannonballs are just wiping my horses out. Just wiping them out. Th this is why I hated playing with turrets and cannons, because uh, it was just so long-winded. Okay, so we, we can now create Turkish stuff. So I can show you them as a nation as well. Oh, this is pretty... Pretty handy. This video is going on for ages. <laughs> this video has gone on for ages. In fact, I might have split it into a few. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I love playing this game. That's the problem. And there's no, there's not there's no um, you know, in Age of Empires when you can build that wonder and after 200 years you just automatically win. You can't you can't do that in this. I think there is a mode though. Where you can win via score, and if you have a if you have a higher score than the people at the end, then uh, you you can win. But I'm not sure if I think there is. I think Russia's getting a pretty good base right here. They've got loads of freaking turrets. This is this is what I mean. Games can go on for ages when you have cannons and turrets on, and then they build loads of walls and shiz as well, which makes it even harder. Okay, so these are the barracks for Turkey. They look a lot different, and yet again, they're a lot cheaper to make as well. Because they don't, they don't require gold, and that's the thing that is usually quite uh, quite hard to come by. And Turkey can create pikemen. They are slightly stronger than Poland's pikemen, but they require iron. They can also create kind of musketeers. And they've got a different design as well. And they can create these light infantry men. You'll notice the light infantry men are cheaper, but they're a lot weaker as well. But they are a lot quicker to make. So as you can see, if you have two selected, I think it goes one to one. Yeah. 
So as you can see, the, these guys come out a lot quicker. But what I am going to do is I'm going to just create uh, musketeers. Because musketeers are... They're more fun. They're more fun. And they also have different horses. They have... And they have one of the strongest horses in the game. Now, Turkey, Algeria, and I think Ukraine, don't have the 18th century. So they can't go into the 18th century. So, Turkey and Algeria are very kind of weak late on. Ukraine are very strong late on. Ukraine... Even though they don't have 18th century, they're musketeers. If they're fully upgraded, they do so much freaking damage. So it doesn't matter. Uh, so, although Turkey, they do have Tatars. Now these are, these are um, archer. They're archer horses. And you know when I said uh, this carries over? If I had Polish guys building a building, it would. Um, so, you know, I had that horse upgrade, which reduced the time that you can build horses. Uh, that doesn't work for, for this one. So, I'd have to redo it for Turkey, unfortunately. Um, but once I do it, these horses create very quickly. And they are very, very strong. Because they can destroy buildings very, very quickly. Th this, is their, uh, th this is their equivalent of this building. It's just like a little tower. That, this is what I love about the game. It's like so many different buildings, different designs, different units, different tactics. Forget Age of Empires, guys. Forget it. Seriously. This is this game. Like, this game should have been far more popular. Because Age of Empires was hugely popular. Like, everyone I know has played Age of Empires at some time in their life. Um, let's do that. So, if I wanted um, these peasants to collect stone as well as my Polish ones, I'd have to I'd have to do the upgrades for those. The upgrades only affect your units for that nation. So, I can still I can still go and build this with Polish men, and it will build quicker because those peasants have the upgrade. If if that makes sense, uh, I can also build another 18th century uh, barracks, but I'm not going to. Uh, Russia can go into the 18th century, which is pretty cool. Let's upgrade, let's upgrade these guys a little bit more. Let's send all these guys over. We need to take out Turkey. We really need to take out Turkey. Now, units have different movement speeds as well. Like, horses are obviously quicker. Uh, there are also these horses, which are pretty cool. And they're, they're just really quick. They're like bull guys on horses. They're pretty pretty funny I'm gonna build some more town centers just because it'll increase my um, housing Let's build some houses as well there we go pretty cool oh they've got a mine right oh we got all these as well holy shit this is what I mean you can have gigantic armies like when you played millions mode You'd usually have a peace time of 10 minutes. By the end of that 10 minutes, half the map would just be armies of men. Because you start off with millions and millions of resources. So this is what I mean. You'd have, you'd have cheap infantry go in to kind of stop the horses charging your squishy archers. These are these bold things. These are really crap, okay? But what you would do is you'd try and build this really quickly and then you'd make loads of these and you'd rush your opponent and just run into their base. You wouldn't attack anything, you'd just run into their base and try and cause a disturbance and try and capture their nation's peasants because what that would allow you to do is it would allow you to uh, immediately have a second nation. So that was that was a tactic. Uh, we need we need more food. So I'm going to send these guys into there. If you run out of food, your men start dying. So let's do that. I want to upgrade this as well. So we're going to do that. Get loads of wood. 
This increased harvesting for crap tons. And one thing you can do is set your your points into the base. So when you create men, it just automatically goes into their base. And I'm just I'm just gonna do that right now. Send all that in. Send those in. So when they when they make men, they automatically just rush up there. I'm gonna select those, select those, and go and attack. And we might as well send these up there as well. If they didn't have the the towers and stuff, they'd be dead by now. They'd be they'd be dead easily. I think we can capture turrets actually. Can, can we capture turrets? If there's no men near them. Now, Russia could have easily destroyed us. If they brought that army over to my base right now, I would die like, instantly. You can create loads of freaking turrets. I, I could create like a wall of turrets and then a wall behind it. Let's get some of our Polish men. And create a wall. And you can literally, and then you can have a gate as well. Create a wall. And they should be able to create that pretty quickly because we've got the 95% reduced thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the horses up here to destroy this turret. Because I've been, I've been so busy explaining how to build stuff and tactics and stuff like that. I haven't actually really been focusing on fighting. These guys can destroy buildings pretty quickly. I think there's also an upgrade you can get where they do more damage to buildings. Oh no, you can upgrade your building durability by 80. And that's really good. Oh, durability of buildings by 85. Yeah, let's do that. It's freaking crazy how they've got us in a kind of what do you call it? A small point where they're just massacring us. It's really annoying. If I was playing this without recording, I would b build a massive great big army. I'd build cannons and I'd send the cannons in first to shoot from afar. And then I'd defend the cannons with my with my army. Because uh, they'd have to come out to destroy your cannons. Um, but this is just... I just want to show you guys the game. Uh, so you can select a part of the wall... And then just build a gate. And then... I, I kind of want to build... Let's build the gate here. And then you can open the gate. And close it. It's pretty cool. Be pretty cool if you could make like a drawbridge. But, but you can't. Right, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to send these guys... I'm just going to walk them past. I'm just going to rush them. Cause a disturbance in their base. Pikemen can't destroy a building. That is the problem. You need archers or you need grenadiers. So we kind of need to destroy this building because it's causing a huge... It's limiting the amount of soldiers they can get through quickly. See how long it takes soldiers to get through? Because it's such a short space. I swear there's an upgrade though where you can do more damage to buildings. I'm not sure. In fact, if I... If I aim on that building... Yeah, look, they automatically attack it. And you can select, select all units by doing Control A. So let's just all aim at that. Let's get rid of this fucking thing. Look how long it's taken to destroy it. I'll tell you what units will destroy it quickly, though. These grenadiers. And they're quite quick to make as well. I think there's an upgrade which does more 
grenade damage as well. Send these guys in. Ukraine's coming in now with some some armies. Oh look, they're doing a lot of damage to Russia. I told you their their shooters were pretty pretty freaking strong. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave this video here because it's been like an hour long. Um, if you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos on this game, I can show you millions and I can show you, uh, like I can, I can play it properly where we build a big army and then attack all at once, that might be quite good. I can show you how powerful Ukraine can be late game as well because they're men of freaking strong late game. Um, so yeah, if you want to see more videos of this game, let me know. When Cossacks 3 comes out, I'm definitely going to be making videos on it. Um, I'll be making tactic videos, I'll be playing online, so if you guys want to play online with me, let me know. Uh, I think that'll be pretty cool. It's taking ages to destroy this building. I need cannons! I need cannons! Give me cannons and grenadiers, that's what I need. Um, but a huge thank you for watching this video anyway, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you watched it this far, then you're a freaking trooper, a legend. Um, but anyway, a huge thank you for watching, and uh, let me know what you think about the game in the comment section below.